Hi everybody, it's Andrew Hutchings with you here again tonight. And this video is about how s signs of overtraining, they don't necessarily mean that you're overtrained. Well, let's just get to it and you can decide for yourself. So probably you're not overtraining, but I'm not one of those people who thinks that all oh, overtraining is impossible. Nobody overtrains. Well, I overtrain sometimes and I'm not imagining it because I train hard, I train long, and I try to train frequent. And sometimes I try to train too hard, too long, too frequently, and I'm overtraining. So let's go back to about a year ago. Well, I guess it's like a year and a half ago now. I was preparing for the summer because I'd like to look extra good in the summer. And I was doing, so three days a week, I would work out for three hours. And I'm not talking about just like, I mean, <laughs> working out as hard as I can for three hours. And I would do, I've talked about this in another video, but I would do like the chest tries and legs and work back buys and abs, or maybe I would switch and put abs with the chest and legs with the back, whatever, you get the point. I would split it up into two, split my body in two, and then I would do one half on Monday, the other half on Wednesday, the other half on Friday. And then naturally, so like you get, if you do something on Monday, you would get Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off. And then the fourth day, Friday, you work out again. But if you did something on Wednesday, you would get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days off, and you would do it again on the fifth day. So, and because it's, the way it works out, you would be alternating which half of your body you get three days off of, and which half of your body you get four days off of. And I was like wiped out. This situation actually may not be overtraining, but it was training to the point where it was negatively affecting the rest of my life. So if you had nothing else you had to do besides work out, Maybe it could have been okay, although I still think it was slight overtraining, so I'll get to explaining all this stuff. So basically, I would do those hard workouts for three hours, going very hard, and I would be wiped out, just like no energy left. I'd go to another class afterwards, because I remember my schedule, I had certain classes afterwards. And when I was done with the school day, I was wiped out I'd get home and even if it wasn't that late in the day because on two of those days I would get home around um like 4 30 or 6 o'clock yeah so that's not that late in the day but I would get home and I would just lay on the couch and how does anyone do this going to school so much? How can anyone keep up with all this schoolwork? I didn't realize that I was so wiped out because I was working out so hard. I, I was thinking like, how do people go to school so much? But really it's how do people go to school and work out so much? So I was always dreading doing my homework and studying when I got home and I caught on to the fact that it was from working out. But the thing is I really like working out a lot I enjoy it, I enjoy how I look from it, I enjoy everything that has to do with it. And even though school's really important, I tend to focus on things that I like. And I like working out more than I like school, so I put too much energy into working out, not enough into school. But come to the, so that in itself, I would not classify as overtraining because if all you had to do was train, you'd be good. But, I was overtraining because after doing this for a couple, few months, like two and a half, three months, I was worn out. Like I, I could not keep that up for a year or forever. I mean, I was sore all over. And I don't mean sore because your muscles are sore from working out. I mean like just aching all over because of just constantly putting your body under so much stress with all the weights and everything. Like it, it wears on you. So be. I did was overtrained towards the end of that two to three months. 
or you could say I was overtraining the whole time and it accumulated at the end. Like the effects of it were, they added up by the end of the two to three, two and a half, three months. Either way, it's not sustainable, so I consider that overtraining, but it's temporary controlled overtraining, which I'm not necessarily against. Sometimes it's good, like when I did it, I don't regret doing it. I was able to do it for two and a half, three months, but then afterwards I was really worn out and took a couple months off in the summer. So that's not necessarily the best example of overtraining because as I've explained all those complications with it, so to get to more straightforward overtrainings, there are two types, muscular and central nervous system. Muscular overtraining means that, that you hit the gym and when you hit the gym the next time, your muscle is not fully recovered so you can't get a good enough workout. Central nervous system overtraining means that you hit the gym, your muscle may be fully recovered, but you hit the gym again and even though the muscle is fully recovered, you just can't move it with enough force for some reason because your central nervous system is tired. So like today, I went to do back and biceps and yesterday I worked out for two and a half hours doing chest and legs. Plus I'm not the most conditioned right now because I lost workout motivation back in like February and then coronavirus happened and I couldn't go to the gym. Uh, so like, let's just round off to six months of not much working out. And then I just hit legs and chest and triceps for two and a half hours. So today, even though I, I did feel a little bit in my butt, a little bit from the chest work, because chest is connected to your bicep tendon. I don't know if you knew that, but for the most part, my back and my biceps were not, the muscles themselves were not tired, but my central nervous system was still worn out from yesterday. So even though like the, mu the muscles were feeling really great, like I had really good contractions, I drank some coffee that got the better central nervous system activation, but overall, like, so I was pretty good on my dumbbell rows, not excellent, but cranked them out. I, I could feel that I just did not have the same, even though I had good contraction, I just did not have the, it's just like something's holding you back. You can't use your full strength. But then I got to my barbell rows and I had to only put a 45 on each side and it was still like, oh. Like I just did not have the strength. Like the muscles had the strength, but I didn't because my central nervous system was not fully recovered. I was still tired from the day before. That's a good way to put it, you're just tired. So let's do a random example of the other situation. The other situation would be if you hit, and I've done this many times, well, not too many times because I caught on to it and realized that it's dangerous. So I would bench press really heavy be super sore and then like a couple days later a friend of mine would go to the gym he'd be hitting chest and go oh, I should hit chest with him and I would go like I could tell that the muscle was just not only was I weaker than I should be because the muscle was not didn't have the strength different it's a different kind of lack of strength but also I could feel that the muscle just it did not have the same strength to hold everything together and that more force was going into my tendons because if you have the same weight, that your muscle can handle at 100% capacity, but your muscle's not at 100%, something else, if you force yourself to lift that weight, has to be helping you lift that weight. So if your muscle isn't doing the same amount of lifting, more of that force goes into your tendons. Maybe that's not completely, exactly 100% accurate, but for the most part it is. So yeah, I, if your muscles are overtrained, it, you'll feel it. That's the most common type of overtraining. It's this simple. You're trying to work out before your muscles have recovered. Maybe you wouldn't consider, technically it's not overtraining unless you keep doing it. But who cares about those technicalities? So if you work out and you're, and soreness is not an indicator of how much you're recovered because you could be sore, but you could be recovered. But it does have a little relationship because the lactic acid does damage muscle tissues. So, yeah, but it's not a complete relationship.
but just say that your muscles are not recovered. You hit heavy bench and then you go to do bench the next day. You don't have the strength. It's feeling like it's putting too much strain on your shoulders. If you were to keep doing that day after day, getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and maybe tearing some tendons, well, you're overtraining. But if you were to go to the gym the next day and realize it and not do it, well, you were going to be overtraining, but you didn't. So maybe a lot of you, I don't know what you guys do, so just listen to what I said and dissect, and you don't even need to dissect it because I dissected it for you, but to rehash everything, make it real simple. Two types of overtraining, central nervous system and muscular. Central nervous system, your muscles may be fully recovered, but you just don't have the energy or something to move them. And muscular overtraining means that you may be fresh and energetic, but your muscles are just not recovered from the previous workouts. So when you go to do it, they're not as strong. You feel more strain in the tendons. That's not a good idea because you can injure yourself. So I hope you like this video and please like and subscribe if you did and comment because it helps the algorithm. Uh, and uh, check out my Instagram, natural underscore true underscore fitness where you can see good pictures of me and also hire me for coaching, for training advice, diet advice, nutrition, supplement advice, whatever kind of advice. But if it's drugs, I can't advise you to take the drugs, but I could give you good information on them. Um, I don't recommend drugs because your body's not meant to have drugs. Um, that's true and I'm not just saying that. So uh, like and subscribe, check out my Instagram. Probably not looking that good here because I don't think the lighting's that great. Plus, I tend to look smaller after the pump has gone down after a workout for those body parts. And then a couple days later, after I've recovered, I look the best.